弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Thank you, everyone. Uh, today we'll continue with Mr. Yu who met the Kitchen God, the Chronicles, um, for the third time in the second readings. Last two readings we have learned about who Mr. Yu is, his background, his deeds that he thought he done is good, and his uh, dedication. I mean, his 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 yearning for change, and change happens uh, with. The person he'd been praying to every day, Mr. Yu,、uh, Mr. Zhang, who、uh, is actually the kitchen god, and he woke him up in a way that he never imagined.、Uh, woke him up by pointing out all the、uh, superficial aspect of his deeds that he called good, and he realized in a shocking way that all of them are not good, not worthy of merits. In fact, they are all incurring.、Um, Karmic punishments. Basically, it's not real. So, all he did is the thought is evil. The act is not thorough, not earnest, not sincere. The、uh, speech is、um, lacking, ah,、uh, lacking any form of a、uh, gentle kindness in there. It's sharp. It's hurting people. So these are all the things that not just for Mister Yu, but also for us to、uh, have a look. Every day, it's like、uh, I use that simple analogy of looking at the mirror every day to correct that your attire, your look, brush your teeth and wash your face.、Uh, we need mirrors that for that. So, Mister Yu's chronicle is the mirror for that. So, after pointing out the sickness, just like a doctor who has diagnosed the symptoms, diagnosed the cause, he has point. He has、um, give out a prescription. To his sickness, his illness, and I believe that prescription applies to everyone.、Uh, it's a very base, like common principles, but common but not、uh, how to say common to, to know, but not commonly practiced.、Uh, most of the time, we say is common sense, but it becomes a quote rather than a proper、uh, ethos that we stick by in our daily life. So, what is that that he prescribed to Mister Yu and all of us? First thing is to、um, well, he used two words: patience and perseverance. But these things are broad, and he make it even clearer in his context.、Uh, Mister Yu's mind has a lot of um, uh, how to say, unwholesome thoughts, thoughts that are not、uh, conducive to enlightenment. Basically, thoughts that are hindering him from reaching his、uh, most. Sincere, most innocent, most pure、um, part of his life. Instead, he was shrouded in deceit, self-deceit, self-lying, self-inflate,、um, uh, self-deceit basically,、um, uh, and then lust, greed, hatred. The、uh, lust,、uh, which is greed, a form of greed, and then hatred, bearing grudges,、um, ignorance, not knowing all of this is not good. Not knowing that what he did is not sincere, and、uh, doubt. There's 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 this element of doubt as well, very strong, especially after he he was prescribed with this method to change himself. He still have to overcome doubt, and the last one is、um, arrogance. So all these are issues that、um, not just him, all of us has to face. So yes, the most important. Prescription that Mr. Zhang give or Kitchen God give to Mr. Yu and us is to clean up our thoughts every day. Clean up, put it one side, and then just、uh, lift our mental space for the kindness, kind deeds、uh, of Amitofo. Those are together; they are the same. <coughs>、um, 
and also he further saying that you need to have patience that means you need to you need to you need to do it every day repetitively no matter how boring sometimes or maybe how um you know they are not simple easy because those things you need to like a habit right there's a 60 uh, 60 days rules or something i forgot when you do something repetitively for a certain amount of time the medical study says it becomes your habit so if you do something like playing games or staying up late or doing that for extensive period it becomes your second nature so to put it back you either need to be forced to do that like i have to go to work or tomorrow so i forced to sleep yet even then it's not enough trust me <laughs> so for this good habit to form you know to stop allowing the wandering thoughts run running rampant in your mental space and to allow your mental space to be clean pure only have good things in there only have the good best of the good things which is amito for in there it takes a lot of effort you need to have to really thorough in cleaning uh, so <clears throat> this is patient this comes into here patience um, I can extend this patient to another aspect because we are already near the end my spot go a bit deeper and this is a second reading sorry so patience um, in form of uh, uh, in form of like conditions that you met there are conditions where you met which is favorable there are conditions conditions that you met which is adverse adverse conditions are very obvious you obviously know it's adverse something pops up in front of you and suddenly you got scold you got um, blame for something you didn't do or you try to do something nice and someone doubted you or sometimes give you that look of distrust and all that um, many ways now or maybe in your family in your own household you might try to do something nice or try to say something nice but unintentionally becomes taken wrongly so those are adverse conditions small to big in work as well in in, in marriage in uh, friendships in even in studies of buddhism as well you, you have adverse conditions that comes up time to time so those things are um that test your patience you need to be able to um continue despite of this um you need to bear with it you need to understand even you don't understand at the moment because emotions are always quick you need to able to uh, practice uh, not letting it overtake you entirely i think i mentioned in their fun before somewhere um that you know it takes a lot of strength for someone to hold back when they can just let it loose and rampantly even if we let our emotions come out we still need to uh, learn how to pull back uh, when they come up and then eventually learn to not let letting it um, hold become a grudges this is what we, mr yu has issues with he hold grudges with every adverse condition he met and that becomes too strong and that becomes hatred grudges becomes hatred because we all know hate is a strong word dislike 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 and then it becomes hate so to avoid that kind of accumulation we need to be it's easy for me to say now because i'm talking about you know ah, like from outside perspective but when it happens to you you will know so the best thing is you need to be patient about it you need to understand these are not uh, your entirety of your life it's an experience like watching a movie uh you know raining those things will come and go don't give it too much merit Rather, you have to um, practice um, loving kindness. Understand, there yeah, in my in my part is after all the emotion the storm. Trying to learn, be patient, and watch their perspective. Try to get an anger. What's their anger? You know what I mean. Like, what is their perspective of this? The more you able to understand their perspective, or able to leave a room for their perspective in this encounter, then the better you are, easier you are for you to release the grudge. Those are some practical advice I can give because it helps me as well. Not that I, 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 can't, I can't reach a level where I'm not there yet, but this helps you. Empathies. Um, practice empathies, and that takes patience. What about smooth, smooth? What about favorable conditions? That's actually the hardest, according to Master Ching Kong. Well, actually, according to all masters, according to Buddha. Why? Because Buddha himself is showing you. But how to overcome favorable conditions he was born as a prince he's born as a only the, the 
without any doubt, he's going to be king with all the beautiful women around him every day in four palaces. Four palaces, guys. Four palaces. It's hard to even get one property in Sydney. He got four. Um, so, yeah, and then he got his very uh, lawyer servants and he got the most beautiful, I mean, the wife was the most beautiful in the whole countries. And then he got all the wealth, all the respect, all the adorations. So basically, he's, if you want to be human, that's the top condition to be in the human realm, okay? That's a tip top condition. And obviously, this has good karma of many, 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 many kalpas. It's a time measurement unit, many lives, and accumulate a lot. And obviously, he's not here to enjoy. So he's here to show you this is how I do it. But back to our level, favorable condition comes in form of you know, promotions in work or in forms of um, good, uh, you know, good relationship with people around you, uh, uh, with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your family. They're all loving and nice. Uh, you know, your financial is very well, stable. Uh, no worries about home and anything, mortgage or anything. Everything's good. Friends, good. But the problem of favorable condition is it does not last. Not that they will not love you anymore, but the reality of time pushes against this. And too much attachment to this allows you, uh, ties you back, hold you back from fully liberating yourself and others as well. Um, this is actually harder, way more harder than overcoming adversity because adversity is right in your face. You know what's wrong and then you just need to figure out your part in this. That's it. But favorable condition, it, it's like a beautiful music or if you drink wine, a uh, very um, soothing wine or uh, beautiful food. But, you know, one bite, two bite is good, but 10 bite, 11 bite becomes adverse. Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's, it's sinking you in. You sink in there. And when, when you sink too deep to a level where you can't get out, what's favorable becomes adverse. Um, that's still good because you still realize it's not good. Uh, but sometimes if it sink too deep until there's no point of return, then it's hard for you to get back. So put an example like, you know, parents and children, one of the most natural and loving relationship. But this thing can also, or husband and wife, this thing are very important in our life and we need to cherish it. But the issue is we cannot to be too attached to it. Um, we respect, we love each other, we take care of each other. But um, like Master Ying Guang has said, you, when time is up, you still need to collect your thoughts and focus on Amitofo. The best scenario is everyone focus on the same Amitofo. So that's that's the uh, favorable conditions. You need to um, put in the patience to um, not fall too deep into it. You need to patience to restrain yourself, not over indulge in it. Like a beautiful cake, you don't, cannot finish in one day. You can, but it will be disgusting at the end of it. So take it slowly, one by one. Um, always remind yourself, like, this is um, uh, a form of a good karma that I've done in the past. Right now, I'm just reap what I sow. I should not um, indulge into it. I should share it with others, something like that. But so get rid of your greed. So if people get greedy easily in the ever uh, favorable condition. So all this patience uh, comes with a goal as well. How do you get patient, right? Like, how do I get patient? Why wouldn't I lash out at people who's mean to me instead of holding, being tolerant? Why can't I do that? Or why can't I enjoy my life to the fullest in the way they say it? Um, well, it applies to me as well. Why can't I indulge myself in game and, you know, beautiful uh, music and uh, beautiful women and stuff like that? Why can't I do that? Well, number two comes into the picture. Long-term thinking. There you go. Long-term thinking. Yes, I enjoy now. What's next? Like, yeah, you can say I enjoy right now, moment to moment. That's the that's right philosophy, but we need to get this thing right first. What do you want to do in the long run? Like, in the long run, what's going to happen? What, what he say here is you have perseverance to keep going. So, without something that hold us together 
and to move forward. We we hard to envision why would why would we even need to be patient at all? A lot of people patient because they want to get there. It's like you know, company CEO they they need to be patient about their mannerism and everything because they want to achieve a certain goal. Uh, Master Ching Kong being patient, able to overtake a lot of criticism and even outright. Uh, outright, you know, uh, humiliation in our eyes. I don't think he think like that uh, because he wants to be Buddha. He wants to be Buddha, so he's patient. Because he wants to be Buddha, he needs to have a patient of a Buddha. Because uh, you want to be a CEO, you need to be a patient of a CEO. If you want to be a wealthy person, you have need to have a patient of a wealthy person. Don't spend on the small things. If you want to be Bodhisattva, you need to be a patient of Bodhisattva. Same goes on and on and on. So if you only want to be patient as an ordinary people, then you have a patient of an ordinary people. So what is the long run? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? This question you cannot escape. Doesn't matter this life or next life. Right? So that's why long-term thinking makes you more resolved in your, um, makes you more, how to say, hard in your resolve. And that brings out that sort of energy, mental energy to restrain, hold back which is patience. Um, so we had to think long and hard and not, well, let it develop by its own. You know, something that makes you like a calling, like a mission. Uh, it's very important to have that. So these two components cannot, um, cannot escape that, you know, patience and perseverance. Uh, that's what Mr. Uh, this, this is my take on what uh, Mr. Zhang have addressed and prescribed to Mr. Yu. So we finished that part and Mr. Yu has started to change his life, but things do not go in as smoothly as he, I mean, he didn't thought, but things does not go smooth in the beginning. He still have doubt, he still have laziness. So, you know, those things come and go, come and go, and he's still in that same level he was in. Up, more or less, <clears throat> it's not a big change. He he, he knows that his mind, his mental, he, he knows his uh, mental state is not pure enough yet. He's not focused enough to the level yet. So he make himself a very strong and powerful vow, and that one is earnest because he has started trying to reach that long term goal. You know, purity of mind, but he can't at the moment. He just saw himself going back to the same habit thinking happy, speaking happy, or maybe bought action. So he's trying to give a stronger dose of resolve in his mind. <clears throat> so he used um, the statue of Bodhisattva Guan Yin to pray to her, pray to him, uh, by knock, uh, prostrating in front of him until he's bleeding in his forehead, to, and a vow in front of Bodhisattva, may my thoughts be pure forever. May my effort be good may my good effort may, may my right effort uh, preserve forever uh, be di may, may I be diligent in the right effort may I may I be pure in my thoughts uh, if I have any slight um, <clears throat> moment of slack kish, slackness um, then I will fall into hell every morning he did that it's like a mantra talking to himself and then he chant every morning he chant Guan Pusa, uh Namotabe Das Dasadabe Guan Sin Pusa. He chant the name of the compassionate Bodhisattva Guan Yin for a hundred times to you know to to, to 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 reach that level. So this is the kind of thing you we can do. Um obviously I'm not condoning you to knock your head until you're bleeding, but that's just a form of resolve that he has. He doesn't care about that. You know, he just want to get it done right. Um, for us as well, like you will, you will reach a level where you just find you can't move on. You're in the bottleneck. That's when you need a resolve, stronger resolve to do that. Um, for there's no shortcut in this. You just you just have to push through because the direction is already quite clear. Let go of your past habit. All we're talking about is all directions here, right? It's not too complicated to be honest it's let go of your past um, habits bad habits and then um, change your habit to the beneficial conduce, uh, conductive one 
，总之断恶修善啊啊 ，save all the evil and do all the good. Those are simple words, but to do that, you need to have that patience and perseverance, and that takes a lot of your energy. That means you need to let go a lot of things in your life that drags your energy down or takes away your energy. So you need to do what's necessary, and then leave the rest for this.、So、this is the kind of res、um, resolve that we need to have, and there's no shortcut. This is the shortcut. The shortcut is Lao Tzu, like being earnest, trying to get it done. Listen to the teachings; it helps. Master Qing Kong say, "Listen to the teachings day to day. It helps,、um, even though you might not realize it. Even though you might fall asleep on some of them, doesn't matter. You keep listening; it gives you that sense of direction. Sometimes you might have this block in front of you, obstacle. Then suddenly, this this understanding comes in from the teachings. So there's a value of having this discussion and teaching, just to remind yourself. You don't know when you need it. When it comes in handy." You just know it. It's it's just like that, and then actually do it. That's it. The shortcut is just roll your sleeve and do it, and or and keep yourself updated. So, um, from then, after he do that, heart resolve. He, every single word, every single movements, every single thoughts, every single time. He thought he 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 lived as if there was someone, there was a, uh, how to say, gods and ghosts next to him. In the sense, like a police watching over him. In the sense,、uh, so what he's trying to say is he did not dare to be、um, reckless in his in his every fiber of his being.、Uh, he didn't want to be、um, reckless.、Uh, he didn't want to be、um, loosed. He's very、um, he hold himself very、um, tight. Uh, as、uh, every time when he saw an opportunity to help people, to benefit people, if whatever he have doesn't matter big or small, doesn't matter when he's busy or not, doesn't matter people know or not know about his deeds, doesn't matter whether he could, he has energy or no energy,、uh, or his energy could could match or not for these deeds, he will always do it, participate in it.、Uh, he will do it with a heart of joy. It's like this is my liberation. I'm need to do it. I do it because I want to be liberated. In a sense, give, 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 do, do, do. It's it's a state of mind. It's very power, powerful, to be honest.、Um, and doesn't matter how hard it is. Like, or、oh, some people might give him something, trouble or anything. He just work around it.、Uh, try to get it done right. So Wei Xu Chen Jiu or Ho Zhi. So he want he he has that resolve. Every time I saw something that is good, beneficial, that can help others, so he do it. Doesn't matter how, what, what kind of thing is, is that big or small, like, for example, like, you know, small stuff like you know helping people buying groceries or anything. Those are small stuff. He still, he still do it as a part of his habit. Every as a part of his being, his his fiber of his being as part of his life. It becomes him. He's like breathing and eating. He do this like he's breathing and eating. So these two are, everyone have to do that. So. This good deeds is like that. It just do it when there's a chance for him to do it. Talking about this, I also bring in Shyamuni Buddha's、um, talk about Fu Tian,、uh, the field of merits. So obviously, parents are our field of merits because they are the one who give us life. Teachers are teacher represented by Buddha and the Sangha. It's our field of merits because they give us the Dharma life, the wisdom that goes beyond our or biological life. And also the ping ping chong the ren, also the poor people is also our or not poor people, impoverished people or people who need help. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't really mean they're poor all the time, but they're impoverished people or people who in need of help. Those are our field of merits, field of fortune. They, they allow us to plant the seeds of giving, which is the cause of getting good fortunes in form of wealth, in form of.、Uh, Fame and position. You not. You might not ask for it. It will come to you, because these people allows you the opportunity to serve. So those are also our the 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 the, the、um, person we need to be gratitude for, beyond teacher and parents. So those are one of the fear of merits. Fu Tian.、Uh, we need to be aware of when we cultivate things, goodness. Those are the targets we should cultivate. That means those are the people we should serve. Uh, doing that, 
uh, your level will increase very high, trust me. So there's a, there's a foundation, guys. Like This is not like some sitting in the mountain and suddenly you enlighten. No, it's, it's all foundational stuff. It's practical stuff. Uh, sitting in the mountain, that one is after, you know, or after you accumulate a certain level. Maybe in the past life, who knows. Uh, definitely you have done that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. About quintillion times. Only then you have that, you know, what we see in the Zen, suddenly enlightened. Those are because they accumulate so much. So for us, same. But the point is, you need to uh, have a condition to do that. If there's no condition, just charm it off. Don't, don't run around and drag people. Can I help? You? That's that's not the right one. Let's go Pan Yuan. Let's go... Um, that, that, that's not right. That's not natural. Just, just when it comes, present before you, do it. If it doesn't, focus on your own cultivation. Uh, whatever, how, however you cultivate. In our form, you can chana mito for, uh, settle down a bit. Um, so, he do that. He's been doing that all the time, since then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you Fang Bian. Yeah, he follows. He he's in accord with the conditions, and use expedite means to achieve the goal of assisting, of benefiting others. So it doesn't matter how big, small, how busy he is, you know, when even he has one minute, he can help, he helps. doesn't matter if people are looking at his good deeds or not, he don't care about that, he just do it. It doesn't matter if it's in, a, in the alleyway helping people to pick up rubbish or, you know, the food falling into uh, the, the, the package of food dropping on the floor in the shop or supermarket, he pick it up, put it back. Those small things, it's, it's cultivating your character, who you are. Um, and also, it doesn't matter if you have the energy to do it or not, even you're exhausted or anything, you still find a way to do it. So that kind of resolve, you know, you crawl your way to it. If you can't walk, you crawl your way. That level of uh, intensity and, and, and dedications. Uh, if you have lost one hand, you use another hand, that kind of level. Like the six, uh, the, the first patria, Bodhidharma in, of Zen Buddhism. Second patria, he cut, he lopped his hand off to in order to ask for the Dharma, the Dharma of the Buddha from the first Patriya, Bodhidharma. Oh, it's a bit confusing the way I say it. The thing is that his dedication for the to seek the truth is that strong. Obviously, there's a story behind that, why he lopped it off, because in the past he used to be a general and his hand has, that hand has been holding the knife and slaughtered a lot of people. So it's kind of like a tone for his sin in a sense. So back to our point here is that resolve needs to be strong. Uh, no, nothing good in this world can be compared to the to the merits of you know purity, hearts of purity, merits of um, full liberation, full enlightenment. And the roots here is do good, Re, uh, uh, sever the bad, the evil um, habits, the bad habits. So, and also morality and virtues, his parents, you know, as a son, children, husband, uh, wife, uh, mother, grandparents, auntie, doesn't matter. As wh wherever you are, whatever the role you're playing, do your best. So in, 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 in other words, do your part, do your role. So he do his role earnestly as a father, as a husband. To his wife and um, yeah as a teacher obviously he's very smart he teaches a lot of people learn and be diligent be humble be patient always keep in mind of the cause and effect of the teaching of cause and effect in his mind that's the he emphasized on this he used this cause and effect teachings, not just for himself, he also share it with other people. Whoever is he encounter, he used that. Uh, examples of cause and effect, importance of having good cause for good effect. The scariness, the, 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 the cautionary tale of bad cause, the bad effect that caused by the bad cause. <laughs> English. Anyway, um, so he do it as if there's not enough time to do it. So he do it so earnestly as if he doesn't have enough time. To be honest, it, it's not enough. Uh, every month, every year, he um, 
calculate like the Dell Funds, the Faults and Merit book, you know, in calendar, in his uh, notepad. Um, he uh, do it monthly. So what, what he did, what he say. Um, and then he earnestly write it down like a report and submit to the kitchen court. Uh, and so from this, you can see that how earnest he is to change himself for better, uh, to be a better person. And he has done that many, many times um, until he reached a level of, last week Maggie mentioned it, when you move, when his mind moves, there's no impurities in there. Everything is pure and good. At the very least, it has to be good. So it has to be beneficial to others. It has to um, be loving, kind, compassionate, uh, wise. Those are all good stuff. Uh, when he stopped thinking, there is no thought. Holy moly. There's no thought, guys. I don't think he, he he's... I mean, he won't lie about this. So these are, these are the level he is. All right? Uh, when he stopped, there's no thought. So the whole point of chanting Amitofo is to remove that impurities in your mind, right? Even the good one, you don't also attach to it. You just replace it with Amitabha. That's the best part about Amitabha's name. Why this is special? Why all Buddha condone this kind of um, practice, promote this kind of practice? Because it helps us to replace all the rubbish with one thought. One thought to overcome all the rubbish. Even the good one is also not enough. So in his case, he has already reached a objective. Why? Because Amitabha is also still an expedite means. Eventually, if you have no more thoughts to clean up, you have no more thoughts to clean up. The Amitabha also dissolves itself. It's, it's just a level where, yeah, right? Like, if you chant, <coughs> even though all the patriarch master, because this is very, very important. This is the, this is why, this is the significance of your graduation. First level graduation, like you need to graduate your primary school, right? This is a primary school graduation in a sense, or maybe not. I don't know. I know it's some sort of graduation. <clears throat> so, so even the master, uh, pure land master, the, patri the sometimes the pure land master are also the the Zen, the the Chan Buddhism master as well in China. They they are, they, are, they they share the same because pure land master is not done by direct lineage from who from who. It's like whoever has the biggest contribution to the Pure Land teaching is commonly elected as the master. So you contribute the most to the propagation of Pure Land teaching in the form of, say, like, you know, the whole city, China Amitabha, because of you. Yep, Shandao Das, Venerable Shandao. Japan loves Venerable Shandao as if, like, more than China, more than the originate country China he is in. Everyone's like Venerable Shandao, yes, uh, the first level, the, 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 the first patriarch of Zen Buddhism, I mean Pure Land Buddhism in Japan. And for us it's quite a bit, four or fifth. Anyway, the point is, um, even these masters, they have already achieved that level where he has no wandering thoughts at all. Um, he still want, he still appear chanting Amitabha to you guys, because this is a good example he need to set. But inside, Something like that, or maybe higher. I don't know. But the point is, Indian uh, So no wandering thoughts at all. Serene, quiet, pure, calm. So he has that for three years. Sadnian. <laughs> so if we just point out Amitabha, he can just go to pure land. So that's it. He has definitely reached that level. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure he go to pure land in the end. But um, <clears throat> the point right now is. This is the result of your resolve, uh, of your resolve to change your life. So how does that translate into real life? Let's continue. At the age of 50, so what, he, what we saw is how he personally engaged in these good deeds, activities, um, accord to the conditions without forcing his will on it. He's just, he, has, he just has the will to do the good whenever it presents itself. If not, then he... Um, continue to um, cultivate pure mind, not giving a rise to any wandering thoughts. So he has reached to a level where when he think everything's good, in the very bottom line, it has to be good. Uh, no evil thoughts that Mr. Zhang mentioned earlier in his life. 
when he does not think at all, there's nothing else. There's no, there's no monologue in there. Nothing. It's very clean and pure, very calm. So for that, he has been persisted for three years. He has this level for three years. At, at the time, he's off his writing. So from forty-seven to forty, fifty, three years of effort brings him to that level. In Buddhism, I think he can at least. I can't say Yixing Bulan or anything, but in pure land terms, Xinian Bulan is counting. Gongfu Chenbian is counting. So he, he definitely has reached that level where um, if he used the use this to, this is Kung Fu, Xing Si, and if he has a vow and to reborn in pure land, he has the uh, faith and vow in, to born in pure land, it definitely got guaranteed. So at the age of 50, after three years of his transformation, uh, he go to exam and he become the uh, shofu, shofu daren. Basically, he becomes one of the, no, on the exam, there's one of the examiner is also Zhang, Mr. Zhang. So Mr. Zhang is very important in his life. There's two Mr. Zhang. So this human Mr. Zhang, uh, he, um, he's trying to find a, He's trying to, so now we talk about what actually happens. How does that translate into real life? His real life. What's the result? He went into the, he went into the capital. And at the time, Mr. Zhang, who is the head examiner of the, you know, imperial universities, he's trying to find someone from his um, birthplace of origin, someone he knows in his province um, to teach his own children. Everyone commended, recommended uh, Mr. Yu because he's very good. Uh, so he was hired. So now his life getting better, financials. He was hired to go to the capital. Uh, obviously, this is a job opportunities and it imp improve his whole life. So he move on, he bring his whole family there, uh, like move up to the city. And Zhang Jing Gong De Ping Wei Huan Lie Ru Guo Xue. So Mr. Zhang, um, Sir Zhang, in a way, Mr. Zhang has uh, he 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 admires his um, actual virtues, uh, his morality and virtues, his character. So he um, also uh, listed him in one of the maybe professors in the Imperial University, the most prestigious prestigious university in China back then. That was Ming Dynasty. So. Then exam happens. Uh, Mr. Yu also took the exam. He got into it finally. You, if you remember, in the in his early days, he, he's at the age of eighteen. He's very he's he's called talented, but still doesn't get into the exam. Now he got it at the age of fifty. One day, four year, one day, two year. Sorry, at the age of fifty-two, uh, he got it in in the uh, exam, and then following. At the age of 53, he got another level. So basically, bachelor degree, master's, in a sense. Uh, one day, uh, and, and then once he got a master at the age of 53, there is something amazing happened to him. So, because he's in capital, right? Basically, all the ministers, eunuchs, everyone close to emperors are there. So obviously, as a one of the professors or one of the recommended person in the Imperial University, he will engage with a lot of these dignitaries, uh, high level officials. So one day he was called, summoned to meet one of the eunuchs uh, that goes by the name Mr. Yang. Mr. Yang ordered five of his children to uh, give a courtesy to Mr. Yu. Uh, and and he said that these four, because you not, you know, he, there's no more reproduction for them. Uh, so they, uh, I mean, after he's retired from the palace, he um, go around the world and pick, adopt four, five orphans, or five children without parents, orphans, uh, to become his own children. It's very nice. He's a very nice person. And he has one son. Oh, among the five children that Yunak have, uh, Mr. Yang has adopted, uh, he saw one of these five sons, actually. There are five sons. And 
at the age of 16. And he felt strange familiarity with this kid, 16-year-old kid. He asked Mr. Yang, uh, Sir, do you know his um, origin? You know, where you pick him up from, birthplace? Oh, so Mr. Yang replied, he's from Jiangyu, you know, one of the province in China. Because he's, when he was young, he um, actually went into a wrong boat. <laughs> he went into a boat where a uh, boat of, um, he went to the cargo ship that supplies food, grain, probably to the Im imperial capital. Uh, Yu Li. Oh, shoot. And I think I can barely remember, I think I remember his surname is Lü. And then Mr. Mr. Yu was like very shocked. So he um he asked, could you um hey kid, could you take off your left foot? I mean the socks on your left foot. I want to check uh, something in your in the bottom of your feet. Swang Zhi one run, and then he saw there's two birthmarks under the foot. And if you recall back then in the early times, he said that he has five sons, four of them died. And the last surviving one is very smart, you know, very responsive. And the leg, left leg has two mark, birthmark, pretty clear right now. And then he shout in, you know, surprise and in all, all sort of emotion you can imagine, a father who lost his son uh, 16 years ago. It's my son, it's my son, it's my son. Uh, Mr. Young also shocked at the scene. And he doesn't even think so much. Give him back the son, you know. He doesn't say this is my son now, or something like that. No, he give him back, so to reunite them. So obviously, now they have recognized each other. Uh, they're going back to the actual family in the Yu's residence. Going back to the Yu's residence, and obviously the first thing he would think about is to t inform his wife, because you if we remember, his wife cried until she was blind after the loss of the precious son and all the children that would die at childbirth, stillborns. So um, Mr. Yu has uh, rushed to inform his wife and his wife was like, oh my God, like, you know, uh, hugging the son. And when he, she did that, because it's very emotional, her, her, her tears becomes blood. She has blood tears coming out from her eyes. And um, it's like, it's like a baby goat, you know, licking the eyes of the mother goat, something like that. So, uh, um, this uh, uh, this young senior, I don't know, but you senior, you uh, you junior, okay, I don't know his name, sorry, and just lick uh, the blood away from her, his mother's um, tear duct, and uh, suddenly his mom can see again. This is like one of those fairy tales that actually happens. Um, and Mr. Yu is very uh, sad and happy at the same time. So it's just a mixed emotion. Uh, so he let go of his um, career path to be a government official. Basically, when he reached Jing Si, like in ancient China, not everyone can get, do that. Going to masters, basically he already got the salary from the government because to recognize talents, he will annually send a for the practically minded people, guys, they will annually send the rice, like in form of how many kgs. You know, the higher you achieve in your exam, the more food you have. You basically set for life. You can sell the rice for, for land, and then you can have the land rented to one of the farmers, stuff like that. So basically, here he settled. He doesn't have to be a officials. Officials is more like to be to serve, you know, to to have another level, fame or prestige. He doesn't care about that. He just wants his family. So he um, give up his path to be an official, government official, and go back to his home in Jiang, uh, in Sijiang Linghuiji. So he, he let go of his career prospect, go back to his own hometown. Zhang Gao Qi Yi. And then his, um, you know, the, his uh, employer, Mr. Zhang, uh, understood the meaning, significance of this action. And he gave a lot of um, generous gift. You know, contribute a lot of gen uh, he, he contributed a lot of gift to him to bring back to his hometown. So basically he met a lot of good people that completes him, 
complete his family because he has two biggest issues. Uh, number one is his, um, his children losing, his wife, his family issues. Number two is his financial issues. He solved these two already. After three years of effort, plus two years of condition happening in front. So he completed this in five years. Let's think about that. From absolutely no idea, ignorant of anything happened, to getting his son back, getting his wife's sight back, his wife sight re uh, restore his son, his lost son recovered, and his financial issues resolved. Five years, guys. Five years. Mr. Mr. Yu, when he goes back to his hometown, he doesn't just sit there and enjoy. No. This, remember, every fiber of your being, he has had that in good deeds in every fiber of his being. So he give even more effort in doing good to his local people. So all the food that he received from the government, he shared it. Yeah. And then uh, his son finally married because 16 is quite mature back then. Even now, like uh, 17, 18, they already started having uh, couples and some, some married at 18. So the point is his son also married. So now he can, can continue to use bloodline. And then, and even though Mr. Yu doesn't have a lot of son, his son did that for him, for his family. So his son has seven children. <laughs> How? But anyway, seven children. Right, give birth to seven children. So he has seven grandchildren, one son, one daughter. That's that's the that's his ending. And yeah. Si si su xiang yan. Okay, I don't understand. I just know that he has a lot of he has a lot of uh, children, grandchildren now. Uh, he has no worry anymore. So he's, you can imagine his family from a miserable husband and wife and one daughter, New Year's Eve, into a complete family uh, with a different aura. So uh, Mr. Yu, uh, or Mr. Yu started writing this book at that time. So he wrote it at the peak of his life, in, uh, in, in the best moment of his life. So it's a complete story, you know, when he writes this. And continue to change. Being uh, doesn't mean just see just because he reached this level doesn't mean he stop. That's the thing about this. You can't stop. It's a it's a good addiction. Trust me. If you reach that level, well, we haven't reached that, but have a taste of that. Yes. If you can keep going at it, it's addictive. Like this is why they are very jing jing. You know what I mean? Because they once they understand, their world is open. Like everything's possible, that level of energy, the positivity is um, strong. So he keeps doing and doing. So when he writes the books, he also keep practicing what he has been saying in the book, what he has, he has been doing all the time, and use that book as a basis to teach his next generations. Uh, and obviously, he has a very high. He lives a very healthy life. Um, you know, he enjoys longevity. So he enjoys this reunion from age of 53 until age of 88. How many years? Almost 20 years. Uh, eh? No, 30 years, almost 20 plus years. That's a, that's a lot of years. Like everyone, uh, everyone know that because he has been doing good deeds, the heaven has blessed him with his fortunes and merits. So that's the end. Tong Li Ho Xue Luo Zhen Ji. So one of his um maybe he's one of his uh fellow friends in the Wenchang Institute uh, helped him to write or just his friends. Hou Xue, maybe his uh son's friends, I don't know. Someone's recording, uh, taking his record and corrected it. So that's it. He lived happily ever after in in a truest sense of the words. So after we um Talking about this, uh, Mr. Yu, for second times, um, it's important to take note. Um, all these things, there are circumstances, right? That that doesn't apply to us. Doesn't mean that it's not um, relevant. It's just we use him as an example of someone who's completely ignorant about himself, about his deeds, but able to have a condition that wakes him up, and he's willing to. Make use of that opportunity that uh, 
a little light in his life, in his dark, depressing life, to get out and make some changes. And his changes does not come cheap. It has to take every fiber of his being to get out of it. And it, it speaks so much about if we want to reach whatever goal we want, as long as, as, as it's noble, or maybe it's good, it's kind, we need to commit to it 100%. It's not, it's not something we just do it, like Elfan has mentioned in the end of his writing as well. A lot of people say they want to get uh, you know, into the imperial examination to be a great official, to be powerful, or to, to achieve wealth. And then in the end, they just give up when the circumstances came that way. Uh, because they all don't really want it. So for us, we need to f we need to um, know ourselves, find ourselves, and make use of Mr. Yu's teaching uh, to um, to point out our own direction in life. Uh, so yeah, let us sink in. Um, take your time. In my case, take your time. Not everyone's can do that suddenly. Um, but I, I strongly believe good things come to you. If you're willing to give an ounce of good deeds, you get ounce ounce of reward. And when you do that, don't ask for reward. Don't ask for uh, who sees me, recognitions or anything. Always ask yourself, have I done my best in my circumstances to do that? So that's that's the that's a take home one exam uh take home uh, take home thinking is you take this back and ask yourself have I done as much as I can in my current level uh, to do good if not then ask yourself why uh, how do I do better uh, or rather you know how do I improve my life to the next level uh, not everyone get intense experience like Mister Yu trust me not everyone. But there are people misfortune like that. They got this opportunity. They hug that at it. It's like someone who's already rich or well off in his family, and then now you tell him to work hard, diligent. It's like, what's the point, man? I got all that. Or he's already intelligent and nice. He does not need the or the struggle. He doesn't go through the struggle to get what he is. That was his past karma. The problem facing these kind of people is if they want to go to the next level, they need to start finding, not finding, they need to open to adversities to excite him, to get up. Because if everything's well, there's no need to change, right? Don't fix what ain't broken, you know? Ain't gonna fix what ain't broken. But for Mr. Yu, you know, like, he's been the bottom of his life, you know, trial. So he want he has all that potential energy to convert into kinetic energy to push into the top. I'm using science now. So for us, we if your life is very nice and smooth, um, find a way. Well, maybe open up venues in your life. Go somewhere far away. Or be safe though. Don't go to Ukraine. Go somewhere far away with people you know less fortunate, and just be humble and learn from their perspective. Of do something else because you're already well off, then you can have more options. If you're already in deep trouble in your life, obviously that's the exam you have to face. So everyone has a different condition, is what I'm trying to say. It's different circumstances. Making use of this smartly, wisely is a test as well. If you can use this in your life, become your thing, your own chronicles of whoever you are then successful, you're successful. Uh, doesn't matter what level you reach. See, Mr. Yu doesn't even become an official at all. He didn't even take a official title. He's just an exam. He got into that. He has the potential to it. He, he doesn't care. He wants his family back. For us, it's not necessary about fame or prestige because for Liao Fan, it's important in his contact. He wants it. He really wants it to serve people and obviously his personal ambition and goal. For Mr. Yu, he, he just wanted to really unite with his family. He just wanted to get his life back on track. He got it back. He got all he wants. These officials and anything does not matter anymore. So for us, we need to ask, uh, what do we want in our life? Uh, what drives us forward? 
Remember, Buddhism is not about sit down and give up. There is a article, 不是躺平, 我明白吗? There's a lot of misunderstanding about Buddhism, especially in Chinese community. They have said they're all pessimistic. This kind of teaching is telling you to empty, 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 and then nothing happens, nothing is real. No. So Mr. Ying Guang has shared one story I would like to share with everyone shortly. There is, um, back in the earlier nationalist era, there's one Jesus. Uh, it doesn't matter what era it is, happens. Um, this um, Buddhist, lay Buddhist, has um, issues. He and his wife are loving. And they have a loving son. They, they, they have a cherry, beautiful um, family. But his son died away very early. And that hurts him very much. And he become very depressed. He wrote a letter to Master Ying Guang say, My life is dark. My life is meaningless. You know, everything is, this sixth realm is painful. I want to go out. I don't want to care about this world anymore. Something like that. Very dark and depressing. And he used all the Buddhist terms like MT and all that. So Master Ying Guang say, without this, who knows? This isn't the way your he the heavens use to teach you the realities of six realms, to, to, to push you towards the liberation from these six realms. Otherwise, you think everything's good, you don't want to go out. There's no impulse to push you forward. And then he's like, yeah, that's right. So I want, you know, I, I want to give up. Don't care about the world and focus on going to, going out, you know, of these six dreams. And then I think I say, you're wrong. Even the worldly sage, that people were not aware of the, you know, six dreams and above, but beyond six dreams, worked so hard to do good, to get rid of their evil, to do their job, to do their part, let alone the people who aspire to be, you know, the big sage, the, the Buddha. So just because you have sufferings doesn't mean you sit there and, and, and just say emptiness, emptiness. You need to do your job, do your part. Now you're still husband to your wife, right? Now you're still a uh, you know, son to your parents, right? Now you're still a worker or subordinate to your uh, employer. You do your job. You still need to have a goal. So he didn't say that you just sit there go. So for us Pure Land practitioners, if your time is up or if you have that spare time and you can focus on Amitofo, that's the best thing you can do. If you have job and duties, do your duties and job. Amitofo can be part of your life. doesn't need to. It, it, it's flexible. The point is it's flexible. It can be used anywhere, anytime. So I would like to conclude this here uh, in Mr. Yu with a, uh, with a hope that we can all make use of it in the second readings. Um, is that, uh, that's it. I will open up for any feedbacks. No? We'll wrap it up. Okay. Thank you. We'll see what we do next week after the youth group uh, in terms of Chinese lesson and uh, in the next book we're going to talk about. Um, I think we might have Tai Shan Gai Pen straight away. It's going to be hard to make it in English. There's so many terms. But um, yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for uh, reminding me to continue. So I uh, hope that uh, this has been a journey for me and you and everyone else watching. So thank you. Uh, let's do a dedication of merits. This time we'll, we'll directly do it from the book. Which are Amito for first, and then merits. Ah me to for ah me to for ah me. May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha.